This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome to this first lecture of the MBBR series. It will be about the MBBR process description. In this lecture, we will first start by the history of the MBBR, just a brief description. Then we will go through the process uh, of this technology. Then we will cover the system components, the applications of the MBBR technology, the MBBR media, the advantages and disadvantages of the MBBR, the wastewater treatment plant material and finally we will compare the MBBR and the activated sludge process. Now let's start by a brief history. So the MBBR was created in the late uh, 1980s in Norway by the professor Halvard Odegaard and the main purpose was actually to create a more compact wastewater treatment plant compared to the activated sludge system and also to improve the treatment efficiency. The MBBR is currently used in over 50 countries and it can be also used for uh, all flow ranges whether it is a, a small range up to a very large scale projects. Let's go through the process description of the MBBR. The MBBR is a secondary treatment. The primary treatment is usually a clarifier where the particles settle down and we have the formation of the sludge and we have a big removal of total suspended solids as well as some reduction of the BOD. Then the wastewater is transferred into the secondary treatment, which, which is in this case the MBBR treatment. The MBBR can consist of many reactors, whether it is aerobic or anaerobic or what we call as uh, anoxic. We will go through uh, these processes later on. But for now, let's understand how this process works. So we have here two tanks. One tank is aerated through air bubbles and we have an anoxic tank with a mixer. In these two tanks, we have, of course, the wastewater that is being transferred from the primary treatment into these tanks. And within these tanks, we are placing very small plastic media, as you are seeing here. And this media are called the MBBR media or biofilm carrier. These media are mainly responsible of treating the water and highly lowering the organic matters such as the BOD and the COD as well as the nitrogen. These media are constantly moving within these tanks. So whether it is the aerated tank or the aerobic tank, the media are constantly moving or uh, in the anoxic conditions also uh, uh, the mixer will make these media rotate. On these media we have the formation of what we call as biofilm. So on these small pores we have as you can see here this uh, biofilm that will be starved. We, we will create some conditions in these tanks that will make this biofilm starve and they will like between parentheses they will eat the organic matters and this will cause the high reduction of the pollutants within the water depending on the type of pollutants and the degree of removal of these pollutants we can have many mbbr stages for example we can have a single stage bod cod removal so we can have only one stage one MBBR basin that is being aerated, of course, with MBBR media. 
and as a primary treatment, a primary cl clarifier. And the MBBR basin is always followed by a secondary clarifier. In this clarifier, the activated sludge that was formed within the MBBR basin will settle down. And this activated sludge will not be pumped back to the MB MBBR basin like the activated sludge process. So this is one of the advantages of the MBBR. No need to pump back the activated sludge, just it can be wasted. So in this single stage MBBR process, we can only remove BOD and COD. If we want further removal of BOD and COD, we can add another basin so we can have two MBBR uh, aerated basins for further removal. And if we want also to have a nitrification stage, we can add a source of alkalinity before the BOD removal tank. And in the second basin, we will have the nitrification process. Of course, these two basins are aerated. We have here aerobic conditions. The MBBR process can highly reduce the nitrogen in the wastewater. And in this case, we have to use three types of reactors. The denitrification tank, which is usually the anoxic tank, the BOD removal tank, and the nitrification. In the case of anoxic tank, it, is, it works in anaerobic condition, so no air is being injected within the tank, only we have to use a mixer. For the BOD removal tank and the nitrification tanks, we have to inject air since, it is an, since we need aerobic conditions. We have two types of setups. We have the pre-anoxic denitrification, the anoxic tank comes before the BOD removal tank and the nitrification tank. We have also the post-anoxic denitrification. The anoxic tank will come after the BOD removal and nitrification tanks. For the pre-anoxic denitrification, and since we need a carbon source for the denitrification process, this carbon source in this case will be from the BOD that will come from the primary clarifier effluent. In this case, the BOD is still high because the, re the BOD removal tank comes after the denitrification tank. So in the primary clarifier, we have uh, around 30% removal of BOD, but still we have a high concentration of BOD. So we still have this carbon source that is being needed in the denitrification tank. So no need to add extra carbon in this case. What we actually need to add is the nitrate nitrogen that is usually produced by the nitrification source. So we have the NO3 that is being produced. And since the nitrification tank comes after the denitrification process, we have to recycle and pump back some water from the nitrification tank into the anoxic tank. In the case of the post-anoxic denitrification, and since the BOD removal tank is before the anoxic tank, and as I have already said, we need a carbon source for the denitrification process. In this case, we have to add a carbon source that can be, for example, the methanol. So we can add some methanol but in this case we won't face the nitrate nitrogen problem since the nitrification process comes before the anoxic tank so no need to recycle any uh, NO3. A properly designed MBBR wastewater treatment plant can have very high removal efficiencies for organic matters like the BOD it can remove up to 95 percent of the BOD, similarly with the COD up to 95%, very high nitrogen removal also, uh, it can reach 90% and also for the phosphorus removal up to 90%. Now let's see what are the system components of an MBBR treatment plant. First of all, we have the basin, 
which is simply a rectangular or circular basin that can be made of uh, concrete or metal it depends on the uh, context then we have the mbbr media so these tiny plastic media we have the media screen retention these are very important elements because the media are very small and to avoid the migration of these media into the sedimentation tank we want them to stay in their tanks and not migrate uh, into the sedimentation tank so we have to include these media screen retention that are actually perforated and made of stainless steel durable material we have also the air blower to inject air into the uh, aeration uh, tanks we have also the air diffusers to diffuse the air into the tanks we have the mixers also for the anoxic uh, tanks in the anaerobic conditions we have many applications for the wastewater not only it is used uh, to treat the sewage but also it is used to treat the wastewater of the pulp and paper manufacturing of the chemicals manufacturing textile factories dairy processing beverage manufacturing and we have excellent removal efficiencies in these types of wastewater so the mbbr is not just used for sewage but also it can be used for many other applications let's have a closer look on the mbbr media so these are also known as biofilm carrier as you can see if we zoom in into uh, these media you can see the biofilms that are proliferated into these tiny pores the diameter is usually 30 millimeters so a very small size and the my and the biomass grows on the protected inner surface of the carrier so uh, these surfaces these media are specifically designed to provide the perfect surface for waste consuming microorganisms to thrive and most importantly the biomass present in the mbbr is of very high quality compared to the activated sludge biomass it has a very high removal rate whether for the bod the cod or the nitrogen depending on the quality the media life can also be uh, around 15 to 20 years let's check the advantages of the mbbr technology it has a lower hrt so hydraulic retention time compared to other technologies so consequently we will have less area required also we have a very important feature which is a lower sludge production this is very important because of the high cost of treating the sludge also we have minimal maintenance compared to other technologies and a very important feature also the mbbr responds to increased load so if we have a sudden increase of flow or uh, a change in uh, characteristics whether we have a higher bod for example uh, entering our plant the mbbr won't really face problems compared to other technologies such as the activated sludge process now for the disadvantages the mbbr requires skilled specialists so the operators must be experts in the field of water treatment also it attracts insects like any other uh, wastewater treatment plant and it requires continuous monitoring an mbbr wastewater treatment plant can be made of metal or concrete for a more durable material or even it can be a packaged plant using a, a container so you can create a mobile wastewater treatment plant so this is a very important feature why because the mpbr requires less area compared to other technologies and also it is very efficient if we want to compare the mbbr and the activated sludge process first of all the activated sludge process is unstable under large load variations the mbbr can provide high efficiency when we have changes in the influent load the activated sludge requires higher land area compared to the mbbr which is more compact 
we have a higher power consumption in the activated sludge compared to the MBBR. We have a good quality effluent in the activated sludge, but we have an excellent and a better quality effluent in the MBBR process. The activated sludge cannot handle sudden increase in the volume of sewage. We will have bad results. In case we have a, a higher volume for the MBBR plant, we can easily manage the increase of influent sewage flow by simply adding more media into the tank. For more information about MBBR design and step-by-step -step calculations, please click the following videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe.